What's going on, everybody? This is Chris Sella, and you're listening to Underground Sounds on CKUT 90.3 FM. I'm your host from 514 Online Mix. Today, we have a very, very special guest, creative director and co-founder of Pop Montreal. Can you believe it? We're here with Daniel. Hey, how you doing? Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm going to get right into it because um, just looking into uh, who you are, uh, you also were on CKUT. Yeah, I sort of one of the first things I ever really did kind of like music industry, uh, music related was at CKUT back when I like I went to McGill in the mid 90s, like I graduated mm -hmm. in 2000. So it was actually right around the time that we funk was starting. And yes. I knew I knew uh, DJ uh, what well, Mike, what's his DJ name? Anyway, uh and anyway, Mike Lai, he he uh, he was a friend of a friend from McGill. So I started hanging out with them on CKUT and got to know the station a little bit and had like uh, a like uh, for a few months, I did like a late night show after we funk. Um, so I always, I've always had like a great, uh, great relationship with CKUT. It's definitely like form part of my like musical exploration over the years. I listen to it. I love a lot of the shows. I have friends who have worked there, had shows. So yeah, it's great to be part of it. That's amazing. And uh, we're also on CKUT, as you may know. And yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just, amazing how small our city really is montreal and how everything just comes in full circle when it comes to the music and industry uh in montreal pop montreal is very important to the pop culture and culture of music of artistry in this city what led you to create and uh and start pop montreal well, it was so uh, basically like uh, after I finished McGill, I was like, oh, I want to hang around the city. Um, I had a part time job. Uh, my brother is in a band. They're called Stars and they're actually playing at the festival this year. Uh, he was living in New York City at the time um, and their band was releasing their first album in 2001 um and i was like oh i finished school i have a part-time job looking for something to do something more creative so i basically like volunteered to like help his band out and they had quite a bit of success uh with the release of their first album they signed to a small american label they were getting good press they were touring so i so i basically got involved from the beginning helping them out going on the road with them helping set up interviews tour managing selling merch driving you know and so that was kind of my like my intro to the music business so to speak um and at the same time i was also like still collecting vinyl djing house parties here and there like still a fan of music um and then kind of like de facto managing my brother's band which was a great experience i put on a couple shows in montreal um, and I just happened to be on a train ride from Toronto to Montreal via rail. And I had done some record, uh, record buying in Toronto, had a bag of vinyl with me. And then this, this guy sat down beside me, his name's Peter Rowan. And he's like 20 years older than me. And he's like, Oh, you're, a, you a music guy. And so we just started chatting. We talked to for the whole, uh, train ride about, different stuff but he he had just moved to montreal fairly recently and he's originally from the east coast and was part of like the the halifax pop explosion festival that uh he was like one of the founders and he managed bands like eric's trip and sloan and he was managing uh, julie Doiron at the time so we kind of just like connected talked about music and then we like um bumped into each other a few months later at a show and and then like I contacted him about potentially doing something in uh, the Eastern townships and that didn't end up happening, but he was like, why don't we just start a music festival in Montreal? I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. I was like pretty, like I was 25 at the time. I didn't really have uh, 
like <laughs> a lot of experience, but I guess I was naive and, you know, curious and passionate. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So like, we just started calling a bunch of friends, like connecting with like CKT, different, a few different venues, uh, Greenland, Blue Skies Turn Black. Um, and we were able to like pull off the first festival in about six months uh, preparation. So, you know, there was like kind of a cool little thing starting to happen in the late 90s, early 2000s. Casa del Popolo had just opened another couple of venues. There were some like cool bands starting to to like play around town. So we just I think we were like in the right place at the right time and just went for it. And like basically every edition was just like an experiment to try to do it, like raise a little bit of money, get some sponsors eventually get grants and like over the years we've kind of like grown still like re retaining the grassroots spirit of the event the community spirit of the event but like becoming more structured obviously um but like that's the, like you know we've always wanted to, or i've always wanted to like keep that like independent community oriented spirit to the festival like that's how it started it started as a grassroots event for like friends and and bands and and just like that and just keep that so that's kind of how it all started and like yeah every year it's like let's do it again why not <laughs> <laughs> wow that's incredible social media wasn't um predominantly used back in 2002 around the time when you were uh, starting the mm -hmm. festival so how so how did social media change about montreal today and, and it didn't even have an impact yeah, well, so, yeah, so I guess MySpace was the first one that we really started. So, like, we were kind of at the beginning of social media. Like, even, I like, this was, yeah, 2002, 2001, 2002. We were, like, the first thing that we spent any money on was, like, building a website. Like, we knew, we knew that, like, that's where the future was. Like, web, um, blogs etc i can't remember the exact year that myspace started but i think it was like 2003 2004 like it was right at the beginning of the festival but there was like there wasn't like the big social medias back then but there was there was something called like a, a steel post which was like a message okay. board yeah and so there was like message boards so that was basically social media it was like more like niche oriented it wasn't like um as huge and corporatized but it was like mm -hmm. the music indie music community in montreal had like this board where people would like find out about shows share share their show information like gossip whatever it was so that was kind of like like when we were beginning that was kind of like where social media was at and then like myspace kind of came out and it like amplified things and like that was a way that like bands would put their music up online before soundcloud um before obviously before spotify before things really became like heavily digitized and mo and monetized and streaming and all that so so we kind of really like developed with social media over the years you know like myspace i definitely remember like, like contacting artists on myspace like even you know one of like our first employees me messaged me on my, like message the pop Montreal on my space. He was like a high school kid at the time. And he was like asking about getting involved in pop Montreal. And I ended up inviting him to like a secret arcade fire show. And I was like, you have to show up here. I can't tell you what it is, but like you, uh, yeah. you should come. So I think that, yeah, like I think social media, like I think it was like a little bit more innocent back then. It wasn't like all about like advertising and like all this stuff. It was just more about like, actual social media like connecting to people directly through the internet oh that's amazing so you mm -hmm. did you always grow up uh, listening to indie music uh well i've always had like a very uh kind of i mean i think for me eclectic taste in music i think like the hip-hop was the first music that really kind of like awakened something in me uh, in high school, uh, I was kind of like early '90s Native Tongue era, like Tribe Called what Quest, Taylor Toll, Far Side. That was kind of like my first real love. Before uh, that, I was kind of like a little bit into grunge and heavy metal, like Metallica, um, uh, Guns N' Roses, and then like Nirvana, Soundgarden. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I went to like a, um, Lollapalooza 
back in 92, I think. And it was like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Beastie Boys. Uh, yeah. So like in high school, I was kind of interested in everything. But like, but hip hop was like the first musical art form that really like connected with me. And that that kind of sent me into like DJ culture and discovering funk and soul and reggae music just from collecting vinyl. And I was not, I was never like a big punk fan, like growing up, but I kind of got more into like indie music through my brother's band. Cause he was like in an indie band. And through that, I started listening oh. to more like through him and his friends started listening to more like kind of, yeah, like, Brit pop and all that stuff and so I mean to me I'm just like a fan of music I love I love music in general I think you know like there's so like the world is such a diverse place of all kinds of different cultures and representations so like music is just like a great way to discover um, you know what people are all about it's like one of the best art forms and so yeah i'm 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 kind of like interested and in, i listen to all kinds of different music for sure mm, rhythm a universal language yeah I, mm. I feel that um before we get more into pop montreal i just would like to know uh is there any local artists from the city that you're you have your eye on right now uh yeah like some of the bands that uh have I applied to play this year or playing pop Montreal that I'm excited about. Um, there's uh, this singer named uh, um, Erica Angel. Oh, okay. And she was in the band Thus Owls, and she's one of my favorite. She's released an album on Constellation uh, this spring, and she's one of my favorite local singers. We actually did a Sinead O'Connor tribute show in July. And she was the musical director and and performed and like she has like an incredible voice and it's really interesting. Um, some other ones, Sarah Rossi. It's kind of like jazz adjacent indie folk. Um, I really like her. I haven't seen her perform yet. Uh, Don Cadence uh, is playing kind of more like alternative R and B. Yes. Um, I, I really like Samido. I've worked with Samido a lot over the years, and he has like a new project that he's going to be um, presenting at Pop, kind of like a debut performance, more like soundscape oriented uh, music. Uh, Eve Jarvis, I'm a big fan of. I also manage him, so I'll like uh, <laughs> shout out him because I work with him, and he's got a new album coming out. Uh, well, he's got a single coming out on September 25th, so that should be like right in time for the festival uh what else there's this like really cool uh sax player named evan shea that i'm uh, excited to see yeah it's it's like one of the great things about the festival is like you get to listen to all this new music we have all these bands a lot of local bands apply to play and like i don't get as much time to go to shows anymore um because of like you know I'm, I'm i have three kids etc cetera, etc cetera. so i got a busy life so it's harder to go out and check out all these bands but you but because i get to listen to them and then program them and then see them at the festival one of the things i really look forward to doing at the festival itself is like just going around to different shows and seeing local local music that i haven't actually seen before oh wow before i do interviews before i'm on stage sometimes i too still get nervous with what I do. Do you still feel the same nerves as you did beginning of creating everything you, you've done uh, today? You still feel those kind of nerves? Yeah, I think like that, that nervous energy is definitely That's natural. Cool. Like if you're not feeling a little anxious or nervous or excited, then like you're probably not, you know, you're missing something. So like it's excitement, obviously like uh, you can't get like contained in it you have to just like yeah. take that like excited nervous energy and just like like in my head you just like the festival can be a bit overwhelming there's so much to do as someone who's producing an event like all you can really do is like one thing at a time so you just have to like go out try to keep people calm like one of the great things about working on a festival is you're working with a team we have like a, a a great staff of people that are working with with us we have like 100 volunteers so like realize 
you're like working as part of like a community event uh everyone's supporting each other you do as much as you can and like try not to stress too much because there's only there's only so much you can do you know and like Correct. at the end of the day it's like it's it's just a music festival you know <laughs> there which is great i love it it's fun and i think it's a really important thing but it's like it's not like you're uh doing performing open heart surgery or delivering babies or firefighting or any of these things so but yeah i mean it's natural to feel the nerves and i think that's part of it yes uh, especially when you're bringing you know joy to the city joy to to event goers um, yeah it's it's something that it's always in the back of your mind like you just want to do your best so I, I yeah yeah that. you want to make people happy and like you I know it's, especially like the the hardest part we're not the hardest part but like this most stressful part is like okay we have like you know 20 or so artists flying in from different cities so like you're always kind of like a bit worried like are they going to get their flight is there something going to be canceled like there's all these little logistical things that like you do as much as you can you prepare in advance you you you're organized but certain th you know certain things you can't control and like you do as much as you can make sure that they make it on the flight and then you know hope for the best you know with this event there's so much to look forward to in, in terms of talent musicians art culture but what are you looking forward to the most i know you're you're in the mix of it you're 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 basically the art the director you're you're creating all of this magic uh, with your team right but mm -hmm. what are you looking forward to the most that you get to enjoy at least well to be honest with you, like one of my favorite things is like the whole experience of the festival. And for me, that's just kind of like, like I have my bicycle, I I go around from venue to venue and check out, you know, 10, 15 minutes here and there of all like, you know, I'll have a list of, I'll try to, I'll try to check out 15, 20 bands a night or whatever, you know, just pop into different venues make sure things are smooth it's always great to see like a crowd of people enjoying themselves um that's probably my favorite thing to do is just to kind of like like pop around between the different venues and see as much music as possible bump into friends bump into other musicians people that i know from the business etc just chat for a little bit have a good time i really love like our kind of focal point of the festival is the Rialto Theater. So we have like our conference happening there during the day. Um, and then we have shows starting in the evening and like there's four different venues in the in the actual complex. So I usually spend a lot of time there. Um, I'm really excited to see Iris Dement, uh, this Amer uh, American uh, folk singer, country folk singer. I think she's one of the like great american singer songwriter is very underappreciated but i think like total legend uh beverly glenn copeland who uh has released these incredible albums in like the 80s and then kind of like disappeared for a while and then was rediscovered um really cool kind of like new age avant-garde jazz r and b um that's at the Rialto Theater too. Uh, one of the things I'm most stoked about is uh, the Manny Fresh Egyptian Lover show. Yes. I saw I saw Manny Fresh do the Tiny Desk concert with uh, Juvenile last mm -hmm. year, and I was like, I have to book this guy. He's just like so incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely, he's, and, definitely has a lot of hidden hidden gems. Yeah, I mean, you you read about his career and he's just like produced so many amazing hits and he's just like such a talented artist and producer. And I just like fell in love with like that performance itself and then kind of did a deep dive into like his disc discography. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned some of the local artists that I'm going to try to check out. And we have the Marche de Possible uh our outdoor venue so uh that should be really good our opening party is september 25th it's free open to the public that's always a great time to come check out meet people 
talk to people. That's another great thing about the festival is you end up like meeting, chatting yeah. with people and they tell you, oh, you have to check out this band. This is my pick. And so that's kind of like the that's social like media in real life aspect of exactly. the festival is like connecting with other people, getting their getting their ideas, getting their picks and kind of just like, I, I think the best way to experience the festival is to have a pass, not make too much of a plan, but just like try to, you know, have like your four or five things you want to see a night and then just see see where the evening takes you and just have a good time. Any last thing that we should know about Pop Montreal before we go? Yeah, we have like a student pass, which is like 90 bucks. It's pretty cheap. It's basically like less than $25 a, a day. Like if you do it over five days, so you can see, you know, like five or six shows a night for very little money. There's a student pass. There's um i think that we have a package if you buy like if you have a group of friends you buy five like you buy you pay for four you get five uh everything's on our website popmontreal.com there yeah like tickets information um yeah we appreciate the support so any even if you go to one show we appreciate it so it, it keeps it keeps the lights on at the office and keeps us doing what we're doing well we just want to thank you for doing this for Montreal because we get to enjoy it as well. And it's also a sense of ripple effect for the artists, for, for videographers, and you just name it. This is really what we love about Montreal, which is the festival scene is always on point. And of course, Pop Montreal, you guys always bring the joy in these festivals and we shout you out. Um, and it's so amazing that you have many fresh this year as well because it's been 25 years since his first big hit with juveniles. So it's it's such a it's such a moment uh for, for Manny Fresh. It's a great year for him as well. So we're looking forward to that as well. Thank you so much, Daniel Seligman, for doing this interview with us. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks so thanks for having me and see you at the festival. See you at the festival for Pop Montreal 2024. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you again. Chilling with the 504. All I mix, all I mix. We up in the